Hey everybody, welcome back to Nerd News Today. I'm Matthew, and on today's episode, we're taking a look at one of my favorite vehicles of all time in toy history, but now with a modern upgrade. And that's because today we're taking a look at Spin Master's latest version of the retro Michael Keaton Batmobile from the Flash movie. Now, if you're like me and a hardcore 112 scale collector, you probably missed out on the McFarlane Toys Batmobile done in the Keaton style as well. That thing sold out way too quickly. It's become so hard to find. Fingers crossed that McFarlane does a second run because they really, really need to. And missing out on that really left a void in my collection because yeah, I do want that, but I also don't want to pay scalper prices for that thing either. Enter Spin Masters, who are not exactly doing high-end adult collectibles whatsoever. They're making toys really, quite honestly, for children but they're doing a pretty good job about doing them. Now, Spin Master's toys are also in a completely different scale. They're a lot closer to the 118 scale you'd get with, let's say, a Star Wars Vintage Series figure or a G.I. Joe figure. But they're doing some really good work at, I think, a pretty darn great price. And as far as evidence goes, I have Exhibit A right here as some proof. This is the Batman Batmobile from Spin Master Toys that came out last year. I've got a video about this coming out very soon also that I hope you're going to tune into. But yeah, I liked this piece a lot. I thought it was a really excellent piece and incredibly affordable for what you're getting. And likewise here with the Keaton Batmobile, it's a little bit of the same for a similar price. Now the version I'm looking at is the Walmart exclusive version, which comes with two additional figures here. So this set comes with a Batman and a Flash figure, along with, of course, that Keaton era Batmobile. Now the packaging as far as this goes to is not collector friendly whatsoever. Once you get these guys out of the box, they're not going back in. That's because this Batmobile is secured inside here in a really weird way. These figures are tied down as well. The cape is stuck in between this like weird space here in the in-between, if you will. Uh, so, you know, collector friendly, absolutely not. Goes on as further proof that these are totally for kids to play with and take out of the packaging. But if you did leave them this way, it's not that bad. It's just the problem is everything on here is gonna immediately collect dust and that's gonna be a real pain in the butt to deal with. And just to show you guys a bit of the back of the packaging here, it kind of shows you a look at these toys and the Batmobile, as well as what some of the action features are that this toy has, which is only the one thing. Uh, I gotta say, this is completely misleading right here though. Like this car does not look that shiny. It does not look that black. Uh, and likewise with the drawings, these toys are not that detailed. This is just like the absolute falsest advertising possible. But I appreciate the hustle. I like the illustrations. I like how this all looks. And it also shows you again that singular action feature that this vehicle has, and that's that the front of the car slides open to allow you to put figures inside the cockpit. But again, it's nowhere near as shiny looking as this. Like this makes it feel like it's gonna be a die cast car. It is not a die cast car. This is the sound of plastic, folks. So yeah, that's essentially how this guy's looking in the box. But let's go ahead and take them out and get a closer look at this toy from all angles. All right, so I've spent a little bit of time now with this Batmobile. I've got a few thoughts on it. There's some good, there's some bad, and as always, there's some ugly. So first things first, just to give you a few stats about this Batmobile, this guy does weigh in at about one foot long. This is a 12 inch version of the Keaton Batmobile. Uh, and one of the things that I think is pretty glaring about this is that, you know, as opposed to let's say uh, a Jada Toys, for example, which is made of die cast metal, this is all plastic. What we're looking at here is an entirely plastic body. It's an entirely plastic toy. And in using that material, it's basically just a solid block of plastic. And when I say that, I mean, there's not really much of a shiny coat to it. It just basically is what you see. It's this color of the plastic that makes up the entire look of this vehicle here. What I'm saying is pretty obvious. It's a pretty obvious observation, but what that does mean is as far as like the color being reflected or having that really nice metallic sheen you'd get with maybe a higher grade type of plastic or especially with a die cast car, which is actual metal, you're not getting that here. So you're getting a pretty much, I'd say a matte finish on something that I would much prefer to be way glossier. And in case in point, we're gonna go back in time for a second. Let's talk about the Toy Biz Batmobile from the 89 movies or even like the 92 Batmobiles, you know, but that era of Batmobile. Those all used a shinier type of plastic to make it have a much nicer finish. Whereas in the case of this 89 Batmobile, you're not getting that. What you see here is what you get with this kind of dull shade of black. Uh, it's, you know, it's okay. It looks fine, honestly. There's not really any problems with it. I just kind of wish there was maybe a further step for it to go. But again, I talk about price points today and how much plastic costs these days and things like that. And Spin Masters is really not about that as you're gonna see throughout the entire piece here. Now, as far as the look goes, I mean, yeah, this thing absolutely looks like the 89 Batmobile. They got the look down packed. I think this thing, is perfect looking as far as it goes, but there's, I think, a noticeable thing about it that does kind of throw me off and makes me a little bit disappointed. And to me, I feel like this vehicle should actually be longer than a foot. Like, you know, I've always felt like the Heat and Batmobile, it always seemed extremely long. I feel like this would benefit from having a few extra inches on it. And I say that because over here, I have the Batmobile from the Batman film. Now, this vehicle came out just last year 
for the latest film with Robert Pattinson. And you guys can kind of see, I mean, they're basically the exact size. They're basically both about a foot long. If anything, this Batmobile from the Batman actually looks a little bit wider, which is also to me a little bit of a problem because I feel like, again, this Keaton Batmobile here, it's meant to be pretty huge, pretty garish in a lot of ways too. It's really supposed to stand out, whereas this muscle car here is meant to be sleeker and not as bulky looking. But, you know, looking at the two of these things here, it really does feel like this one here, which should be way bulkier, is not. Now, I do appreciate how streamlined this vehicle has always been designed, and you get that reflected in the way this toy is made also. But I really do feel like this Batman Batmobile should not be bigger in width or in length than this Keaton Batmobile. And speaking of the Batman Batmobile, I want to point out a few things that this vehicle does not have here. So uh, there's going to be a video on this channel very soon actually all about this vehicle. I'm a year too late, but there's a reason why I'm going to be talking about it. But there are a few things in this vehicle that's missing from the Keaton. And number one is any electronics, quite honestly. I'm actually surprised there are no electronics in here whatsoever. There's no lights, there's no sounds, there's nothing. It just is this plastic toy, that's it. There's nothing else to it. That's not a bad thing necessarily, it's just an observation. For adult collectors, I don't think it really matters as much. I mean, personally, I would have minded some lights maybe in the back. But when you look at what they did here for the Batman versus the Flash movie here, you'll see that this Batmobile has like flames coming out of it. It does have some light effects that would have been here in the back as well as in the hood. Uh, you know, you don't have that here. And honestly, I could have seen them just easily reused this flame effect and popped it onto this Batmobile and just maybe made it red instead of blue. And there you go, you've now got a perfect conduit to put some lights and sounds on. And likewise here with his tail lights, those could have been added with lights and sounds, but they didn't for whatever reason. So a choice they made, it does keep the price point down. But again, you know, when you really look at these two things side by side, it's like one feels like more time went into it than the other. And it's a little bit disappointing because this is such an iconic vehicle. And last comparison, at least for the moment, is the tires. This is an interesting one here. Uh, so the tires on this Batman one are made of rubber and uh, they feel pretty good to the touch. Whereas the tires on the 89 Batmobile are just straight up plastic. There's no rubber on them whatsoever, just plastic. So uh, that is a textural difference that's pretty major. And as far as, you know, let's say if you're a younger kid who wants to play with this, it does make a bit of a difference. Even as a collector, I feel like it does make a bit of a difference because it's so smooth. Uh, you know, I don't think it's gonna be sliding off a display case anytime soon, but it does have a lot less traction. It's definitely a lot more slippery than the rubber tires on that Batman Batmobile. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm kind of, now don't get me wrong. I'm kind of starting this video by focusing on a few of the cons about this piece here, but there's definitely a lot of good as you're gonna see. Uh, and really, again, the whole electronics issue, not a big deal to me, actually. I don't really feel like it's, we're missing that much. Um, you know, and to be fair also, Spin Masters did do a more adult collectible friendly version of this Batmobile that's for about $180. And that one actually is die cast. I think it's remote control as well. It is in similar scale, but it's got a lot more bells and whistles. It's a heck of a lot nicer. But again, keep in mind this right here, 30 bucks versus 180 bucks. So with Spin Masters, you really do get what you pay for. And that's not a bad thing either. You're getting, I think, a pretty fair deal, all things considered. Spin Masters is kind of this company that's become really good at making really nice toys for the most part that are pretty nice and soft on your wallet. And they do a lot of things to not necessarily, again, cut corners, but to be cost effective. There's a difference between cheap and cost effective. And I think Spin Masters is absolutely on the side of being very cost effective with how they manufacture these toys. Case in point, another really kind of weird thing about this Batmobile, and it doesn't really make a difference to the toy itself, but uh, there's this weird space underneath the car, which is basically like where the cockpit seat is. It's this weird exposed bit of plastic, and it's pretty huge. I don't know what was meant to be there, if anything. Uh, it might have just been a way to make the molds a little bit more cost effective again. It's this odd little slot, nothing can fit in there, nothing can go in there possibly, but it's just here. It's weird. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't offer any negative thing or any good thing either. It's just there and it's just a weird thing to flip it upside down. But really, you're not going to have it ever displayed in that way anyway. So who cares? Now, more importantly, onto the good of the vehicle, you know, I think it does look really great. If it's not the most accurate size in terms of like how it should actually look like, all the other details are there in full force. I mean, we have really all the elements that you'd see, in fact, in those older ones from the 90s. Like they're all present here, even if they don't actually function in the same way as they did back in those older toys. The design is sleek as always. It's a gorgeous design. It's a gorgeous Batmobile. Really, there's no argument about that here whatsoever. And that just is a credit to the original designers of this vehicle here. But they did capture it very well in toy form. It's got a pretty solid paint job. And that is also attributed to the fact that there is very little paint applied to this vehicle. You know, we have some headlights, we have taillights, we have a few little silverish kind of elements here on the side. This, this chunk over here is molded plastic as is this little front turbine looking guy over there. Um, so, you know, as far as it goes, looks good to me. Uh, one of the cool things about this, and this is again the only action feature that this vehicle has, is that the cockpit hatch, I guess we'll call it a hatch, slides open. And that's how you're going to get your figures inside this. So 
slides into place, it locks in place. It's not gonna fall out, looks like. Nope, that's not falling out. So it actually will hold its place pretty well. It slides nicely. And it feels like, honestly, like that does feel like a pretty decent mechanism. I don't feel like this is gonna be the kind of toy that gets loose after you know doing this a whole lot of times. I could be wrong, but my initial feeling about it is it does feel like it's locking into place, it's holding its shape, um, it's pretty solid. And while I was complaining about the lack of like the metallic sheen on the vehicle itself, the windows here at least are a different type of plastic. That is a transparent plastic. It's darker too, so it is meant to be more like the Batmobile. Uh, that is the one part where you're gonna get some extra shine and truth be told, it does help a lot in making this feel like it's a lot shinier than it actually is. The great thing about this Batmobile too is no matter what angle you display it at, it's gonna look amazing. I mean, looking at it from head on is great. Looking at it a little bit above is great. From profile is great. No matter what side you do it or what angle you display it, it's gonna look awesome. So the Batmobile is very, very cool, but let's talk about the other bonus that comes with this version of the Batmobile, and that's the two action figures. And uh, over here, we've got our Flash figure, and on this side, we've got our Batman. And this is meant to be the Michael Keaton Batman. So I actually wanna do, again, another comparison going back to that Batman Batmobile, because over here in this hand, I now have the Robert Pattinson figure that came with that Batmobile. And they are worlds apart in terms of quality. Right away, you're gonna notice one thing about this figure is that the Batman figure here is so shiny. I mean, this is the kind of gloss I'm talking about with that Batmobile that I would love to see on it. Whereas this Batman figure, it's a little bit more matte finish. Uh, there are some shinier elements of the black, but overall, uh, you know, it's not as shiny looking as this one here. And the paint detail on this Keaton version is way more refined. I mean, this here is gloppy. It is gloppy, it is globular, it's very thick. Uh, and the face painting also is very bad. And, and likewise too, the sculpting is also not that great either for this. Uh, articulation's pretty okay, uh, I will say. And, and the articulation is actually the same on both these. I'll show you on him in a little moment. But uh, overall, I mean, this is this feels like a kid's toy. Whereas this right here, we're getting closer to an adult collectible. It's still not up there, but the sculpt is infinitely better than this Robert Pattinson figure. The paint application is way better. The amount of detail sculpted onto the body is superior in so many ways than this Robert Pattinson here. It, it really is a night and day difference between these two toys. And that's the difference between one year of production between them. Also worth pointing out is they both have cloth capes, but once again, the cape on this Robert Pattinson one, it's absolutely so inferior. I hate this texture, actually. The texture on this, uh, it's not quite fabric. It's like some kind of other material, but it's very plasticky and very rough. Uh, this one here on our Keaton Batman is much nicer, much softer. Uh, it feels better and it feels a little bit less cheap, I'd say, also. So uh, once again, another way that it's better. Uh, now, as far as size goes also, I was actually surprised to see that the Pattinson figure is about a half an inch bigger than the Keaton figure. So Keaton is an exact four inches, or our Pattinson is four and a half. Go figure. But yeah, at the end of the day, this Pattinson is so much more inferior than this Keaton one over here. Better paint job, way better sculpting. Uh, same articulation, but it just looks nicer and, and plays better. And speaking of, you know, let's, let's take a look at the articulation right now. So you will get a ball jointed head. And I should add, these joints are very stiff. So before you pose them, or if you get them for your kid before they play with it, I recommend you hit it with a hair dryer to loosen those joints. But the head is ball jointed. The shoulders are ball jointed. The elbows also ball jointed. The wrists do not move, so no articulation there, but it makes sense for a figure in this size and this price point not to have that, uh, as well as there being no waist articulation here either. But we do have ball jointed legs, there is a thigh cut as well, and we have a ball jointed knee. So you can get some pretty good articulation, all things considered. It's not bad for what it is. And the same goes for the Flash. Now, I would say the likeness between the Keaton and this Ezra Miller here, uh, this, this one here, likeness is not really there at all. I think they did a much closer job capturing Keaton. Uh, the Flash does not really resemble the actor portraying him. Um, and the paint job again though here is otherwise overall very good. It's just the sculpt on that head, not so great. But the sculpt of the body is very good. Uh, and the articulation matches that of the Keaton figure as well. So overall, the figure besides likeness is actually pretty impressive. I'd say that for both of them, you know. Again, going back to the fact that this is a 30-ish dollar, you know, we're talking low 30s for this set of two figures in a Batmobile. And I feel like you're getting a pretty good value here. But the most important thing, of course, to test with this is whether or not a toy can actually get inside this. So let's slide the cockpit open. Let's see if our Batman is gonna actually be able to sit in the cockpit. Now, I believe as far as accuracy goes, there should actually be a second seat in the Batmobile. And that is, of course, not here, as you can already tell, because there's just not enough space to do that. Uh, you're definitely not gonna get a second figure inside here. But uh, let us see right now. Looks like he's going in there with no issues. I'm just trying to get the arms to fit in there because they're kind of in a weird position since they are so stiff out the box. But uh, he is in there. 
He's in there and he looks pretty good. He's, he's sitting in there pretty nicely, in fact. I wish his hands were having a better position and I also wish there was something for him to actually hold. Uh, you know, to go back to the comparison of the Batmobiles, the Batman Batmobile actually did have a steering wheel. This one does not. It, it does, but it's like just sculpted onto the dashboard and you can't actually handle it. And I don't think his arms could even touch it anyway, but he's sitting in there. He looks pretty comfortable. It looks pretty good. And uh, the cockpit door does close. So you got your Batman now in there, ready to go. So at the end of the day, I'd suggest you take any of my complaints and nitpicks with a grain of salt because I got to go back to what I've really been talking a lot about during this entire video, and that is the price. Because normally, I don't really care as much about that, but in something like this, it's very important to know. This is like a $32 in retail. You'll probably be able to get it for less sometimes, but rarely more. You definitely shouldn't pay more than what the price of this thing is. But I, I think at the end of the day, for like a 30-ish dollar vehicle with two figures, it's a bargain. It's a very good deal because the vehicle itself is pretty nice. It's a very popular vehicle. Uh, and they had to put in a lot of effort in it to make it look great, and they did. They did a very good job. There are definitely things I wish were done differently, but I think those things would have immediately upped the price of this thing, like adding a shinier paint job, uh, adding the different rubber wheels, most likely adding electronics would definitely up the price of this thing here. So as far as keeping it very affordable and very accessible, as well as maintaining an excellent toy, they, I think, did an excellent job here. Spin Masters did a really good job with this vehicle. And I'm also happy to report that the figures are so much better than what we got a year ago with the Batman toys. Those, those figures are pretty hideous, quite honestly. I mean, they're not that good. And I think people weren't buying those toys for the figures either. They were pretty much buying it for either the vehicle or they were getting that awesome Bruce um, Wayne Manor playset. That was really nice as well. So you're getting it for a diorama or you're getting it for vehicles. You definitely weren't getting it for the figures. This time around, I'd say you're still not gonna get it for the figures, but they are so much better that you will actually legitimately have some enjoyment with them. It really is night and day difference between the two of them. Now, again, I do wish this felt a little bit bigger. I don't like that it's only a foot. I, I do wish it was longer in some capacity or something else to make it feel a little bigger because it always does look so huge on screen. And I, I'm pretty sure this is not completely accurate. But again, price point and adding some more would, would cost more. I don't think I would have minded paying more, but again, you got to remember the target audience for this is kids. Adults out there, we can pay 60, 80 bucks and we don't care. We're gonna put it on the shelf, it's all good. A little kid's gonna want this. They're gonna wanna smash it around and bring it outside. And you gotta make something that's durable and playable. And this right here, I would definitely say is durable and playable. But on the same token, it will still look really great in photo shoots. It's gonna fit with your three and three quarter inch figures. So if you got yourself your GI Joes, your Star Wars, or really anything else out there, because there's so many options in that size, this is gonna fit in. It's gonna look pretty decent. So no bad things there. So I'm gonna give this 89 Batmobile from the Flash movie a thumbs up for sure. Definitely thumbs up. Definitely a recommend. If you wanna pick this up for yourself, I'm gonna have some links in my YouTube description below for places you can pick it up. Ultimately, this doesn't replace that McFarlane Batmobile that I wanted because I collect six inch figures and I want that scale specifically. But I also do like three and three quarter inches. And I like the fact that that size is really great for display, very easy to display, and also a lot easier on the wallet. So I do think even in the interim or even outside of that, even just as a collectible itself, it's definitely great for adults, but especially good for the kids out there. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Same bat time, same bat channel.